Uh, Doomfire, I don't think sleeping in the prison with your keys on your person is such a good idea. Oh, God. You're just asking for this person to escape. But luckily, Kimmy isn't that smart, which is strange because I'm trying to recruit her. Just why? Why even bother? Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Vortac. Welcome back to RimWorld. It is episode 8, I believe, in our RimWorld Let's Play Alpha 14. And I'm pretty excited because I have some ideas for how this is going to go from here on out. Now, originally, and let me pause real quick, originally when we started, we started with Vortac, and during picking Vortac and his scenario with the new scenario system, we decided to pick a rich person who was going to make it out on their own and try to form a new community or colony, uh, you know, in the middle of some Rimworld planet. So he landed with his stuff and his mass wealth, which wasn't that much, turns out, and now his goal is to develop a community. Well, in the previous RimWorld scenario that everyone used to play, a, a three-people party landed, and it was kind of like, oh, okay, whatever. Well, survive, good luck. I'm not really going for that anymore. Now I'm trying to really own the story behind why Vortac landed here. What was his deal? Like, what made him come all the way out here? I really want to get into more of the story element of the scenario because that is what it's for. The scenarios in RimWorld are so you as the player can be more creative with how you play the game. Because right now, the only thing I can conceivably think to do is work towards the same thing I work towards every time. I'll build a rocket and get off the planet. Well, that doesn't make any damn sense because I came here in the first place to start a damn colony. Why would I run away from it? I can absolutely do that. In fact, I can make a whole substory where Mojo, Burrito, and Doomfire want to get the hell out of here because they know Vortac is batshit crazy. But I'm not going to do that. Instead, I have some ideas. And if I were to run a colony, first I would start with some very uh, rough setup here. So what we have is, are some turrets just haphazardly placed. And uh, we're just trying to survive. But what if now we had a good system going? We have food. We have power. Why not look at this as an opportunity to really customize the landscape? Really make it shine. Make it look good. So, what I'm going to do today is put that in motion by first making this prison look good. And you're like, what? The prison? What are you, ridiculously nuts? Are you out of your mind? Why would you choose the prison to look nice? Well, we're going to be taking in a lot of new colonists, as you can see. I've never had six colonists so fast before, and I used to start with three. So, because of that, I know we're going to need to house them in comfortable quarters. We're going to need them to be easy to recruit, and if we're going to start making a colony... I want, to, I want it to start here in the prison, which is weird, but that's what we're going to do. So I'm, I have a plan for making this prison a little more, I don't know, it, it make it make a little more sense. And it's going to take some work. And I also have a plan for the defense area too. So I'm going to start getting those building plans in motion and I'll show you guys just what I mean. Like I said, first up on the agenda, the prison. So these plans here kind of show you exactly what I'm thinking. These squares represent parts I've told them to mine. These are deconstruction symbols for deconstructing the steel wall. That'll give us some steel back, which will be nice. I believe someone in the comments even suggested I do as such. And this, these lighter squares here represent a plan for expanding this wall. And I'll also be getting rid of this wall here and just making this room a square box. And the, the entire thing will be basically the same symmetrical shape. And from there, we're going to make little prison cells and so on and so forth. Down here, this might even take a different episode. We are going to actually mine out where these darker squares are and make that completely flat. And from there, we're going to build a wall here where these squares are. And, and we're going to stop at this sandbag right here. That's going to be part of the wall. The turret's going to stick out. I'm going to do more turrets like this all through here. Now... When I say build a wall, I am probably going to incorporate some more sandbags in here because what we're creating is a bit of a funnel. And I've done this in live streams in the past. It worked very well. And everyone has their own way of doing a funnel, their own design that they think will work best for making a funnel in the game. This is the way I'm going to try because there doesn't seem to be a, a necessarily a wrong way to do it. There's certainly ways to do it that make more sense. But we're going to do this my way and just see how it goes. And I'm guessing it'll go all right. 
Uh, I'm getting rid of these trees so they have less cover to hide behind when they're trying to take out our turrets. I may even come down here, uh, get rid of this tree and this tree, uh, go into cut plants and cut that one down and that one down. Sometimes you can't just hit cut. I, I don't know. It's weird. Anyhow, so we're going to get rid of all the trees there. We're going to get rid of a lot of this rock, and we're going to embed turrets into the walls and possibly have them sticking out into here. We're going to be using a lot of sandbags, which means we need a lot of steel as well because it requires steel to make a sandbag. So those are the two plans I have right now. Once we get these things in order, I will then begin to figure out how I'm going to make the actual colony itself. Oh, I forgot about this too. Right here is going to be a wall that surrounds the uh, the base. It's going to be double thick, and we're going to keep these turrets back here, and that's because there's a new problem with RimWorld where, I shouldn't say problem, but a new challenge where if, if the NPCs feel like it's too hard to get into your base from one entrance, they will start tunneling through another. So you want to make, you want to give yourself some time. If they start tunneling through your double wall, it's going to take them a bit to break that down, especially if they start throwing grenades and it's double thick. So that will at least slow them down while we come up with a plan to eradicate them, set up our defenses behind our turrets and shoot them, or whatever we need to do. Because they're going to be able to come in here and they have a decision to make. They can go down and all the way around this nonsense, and I can even put walls here to make it even slower for them. So they go around this nonsense to get to our funnel, or they're going to break this down. So I want to keep these turrets here. But these are kind of the new defenses I'm thinking, and of course my focus today is more or less on the prison, because as we go through this, I'm going to need more stone. Stone cutting is going to be the lifeblood, uh, stone is going to be the lifeblood of this colony, because I don't want any fires to affect the wood, and I also want to make sure my buildings are strong. So we're going to have a lot more stone to cut, which means I'm going to need to expand the stockpile for now, uh, my, what I called my temporary stockpile from the beginning. I'm going to need to go ahead and expand that, and I'm going to hit play now and let them get to work. Uh, so let me click on this, and in order to expand it, as long as it's selected, you should be able to just go to Stockpile Zone, start in here, and there it is. It's expanded. No rules necessary to change. And we already have a good handful of stone, but mining all this out, mining this out, that should give us some more and a good place to start. I also had them take these stones to get cut as well, and all that is going to be stored in this tiny little stockpile I should expand. Uh, right about, I think, maybe... I don't want to go too far out, but maybe like this and like that. That'll be enough room, I think. And uh, now I've been seeing a lot of comments saying, Vortac, why not dig into the mountain now? You, you have, you're you tucked into the mountain, but why not dig into it, especially where this thing is? You could probably dig into all this space. Well, as I mentioned before, the more you dig out in RimWorld, the more chance you have at these awful, terrible bugs spawning in on you and totally ruining your day. And I really just, I just don't want to deal with those bugs. I know they've been nerfed a little bit, but in my opinion, probably not enough. So I'm trying to wait. But once I feel more comfortable with my defenses on the outside, I might start exploring that because if I'm going to do a double wall here, chances are I'm not going to be expanding to the right. And I could still, but I would be, I'd feel more comfortable expanding into this area if I was going to do external buildings. But that's all going to come later. For now, we've dealt with some challenges, uh, with some raids. Those raids are only going to get more challenging, and we just have to look out for our defenses here and now, today. We'll expand when the time comes, but wow. Okay, cool. That was fast. There's even nice floor underneath where they just dug out, so that's really cool. Uh, that'll make my life a little bit easier if I decide to like put a wall here and, and make this area separate from this, but I wasn't really thinking of doing that. I was thinking of like going sell, 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 and going from there. So, cool. Whew. Lots to do. A lot of talking has been done. <laughs> I'm just going to let them work now. I'm going to go ahead and speed up time, and we'll see what we get once they're done mining out what I've told them to mine. We have a pretty decent trade caravan coming into the base now. I'm still doing a lot of work. Uh, they're going to choose to come around to the right, which won't be an option for them for much longer. Uh, let's see where they halt, and I can take uh, my most social person. And I thought that was Vortac. We're going to have to look at all the characters again. It's been a while. Uh, four for him. Weem, none. Higgy, seven. Okay, Mojo, Burrito, and uh, aha, Doomfire. All right, Doomfire, let's see what you got. Let's trade with these guys. 
Uh, wow. There are some things here. Jade Animal Sleeping Box. Superior. Look at that. Just for an animal sleeping box. Wait, is that? Is there any benefit to that at all for keeping your animals, I guess, that happy? <laughs> is there a point? I really want to know. Go ahead and leave that info in the comments, those of you who have played a while. Uh, there's some meat I can buy, which might not be the worst idea. I have been doing some hunting, though. Of course, there's always some animals with these trade caravans, but I'm not really interested or prepared for that right now. Hmm, I could sell... Ooh, I could sell them some of this leather and things. I, I mean, I'll keep the cloth, but other than that, I'm not going to use any of this stuff. And that's always good. Uh, and they have a decent amount of silver to trade if I have anything else to sell. So that should be good. Uh, components. Always good to buy those when you can. And I'll keep, like I said, I'll keep the cloth, which isn't worth much in the first place. Hmm. I get rid of some of these blocks. They don't have any for sale. So, not a bad trade. Start making our money up again. Uh, I did a bunch of silver dropped in the cargo pod drop off too, which was nice. Uh, but as you can see, the prison is coming along. I've installed the front area, and once I get that door installed, I'll be able to mine all this out. And once I get the first cell built, I'll be able to throw Kimmy in it, and we won't have to worry about her escaping as we renovate the prison, take out this wall, and uh, get all that set up. So that's going to be cool. Now my concern is, am I going to make cells big enough to have a table and chairs? There's not really any smaller table that I'm aware of than this one. So you really need a lot of space for them to be happy. Uh, and we want to keep them happy. So I, I thought maybe I can put prison beds in cells so it's organized, but not put doors on the cells so they can freely come in and out of those rooms and have access to the table area. And I'm, I'm thinking that's going to be good. It's not going to feel like their own room because it won't be sealed with a door. But... That's not, I don't think that's a terrible idea in itself, uh, because it's still a lot more space to walk around, and I think that'll, the comfort benefits from that could outweigh the having your own room benefits. Of course, we can put that to the test once we have more people in the prison, uh, but for now, I mean, honestly, we're hoping Kimmy becomes a colonist soon, very soon. So, I'm only going to keep improving the prison as time goes on. Oh, and they're done with this already. And we did get some stone, as I predicted, so very good. I can also take these uh, slag chunks with me, which I'm going to, because eventually you can smelt those into steel, and I might need to start doing that because steel is so scarce around here. Wow, there's a lot going on. Uh, so the trade caravan's leaving. It's raining again, which hurts our solar panel stuff, but our wind energy's good. Hmm, we still have a lot of power issues with these four lights in here. So, as you can see, nothing is perfect. However, we're about ready to do the second phase of our, our renovating. Ooh, and I forgot to mine this right here. But I'm going to start putting in some walls so they have to walk over this turret to get in and out of the base. Which is going to be inefficient for them, but I don't care. I'm more concerned about their defense and their safety. So, let's go into structure. I'm, gonna, I'm sticking with slate walls. I think granite is stronger, but I have more slate blocks to work with. So, I'm going to do slate right here. And just do that. One turret in the front. That's the entrance turret. I can even take that turret away, put turrets behind it, do whatever I feel like I need to do. But, yeah, that's the entrance. I only want one semi-wide entrance for them. And I could even make that one block if I want to be super careful. But I'm not too worried about it. I'm also going to come up here and put some slate wall. I'm not going to worry about this I'm mining out. I'm not going to worry about changing them out into slate. We're actually going to start digging into this a little more now. So let's see what we got. If I go into mining orders, I now get to decide how I want to dig these turrets into the mountain. So I want it to be... Hmm. I want the turrets to be able to shoot people who are standing down here. I want this turret to be able to reach them, but that's kind of hard to do. It looks like they'll only be hit by the turrets that are kind of sticking out. So, that begs the question, is it necessary to dig them into the mountain? Is it beneficial to dig them into the mountain more than one block? So I could do that, put a couple spaces between, do that. And, and there we go. Turret, 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 turret. That's a possibility. I could also come over here and determine, like, put them completely opposite of each other. So, deconstructing instead of what I was doing. We'll deconstruct that to put a turret, and we'll put a turret right there, and then I have to cancel the building order for this one for a turret right there. 
and then we can put a turret right there. And that'll be the turrets in the wall. Now, I can absolutely put more turrets in the middle, and I probably will, but for now, that's pretty good. So, we also want to come into our structure and put a slate wall right here and try to protect that turret from this, this side. I can even come in and do slate wall, which I should anyway, and do something like this where they have to come through this narrow doorway. Oh, and there's water right here. Mmm. This could be to our benefit, actually. Check this out. So all of this, where it won't let me build, this is actually uh, like swamp. They're going to have to walk through this, trudge through it. It's going to slow them down a little bit, and I can even put sandbags to slow them down further. Uh, but having the entrance on one side like that is actually an interesting way to do it. I hadn't thought about that. So they're going to be forced to just walk right into here. There's going to be turrets far away from them shooting, and they're going to aim for this one immediately, which actually puts this one at risk. Let's cancel that one. Because they could stand out here and probably reach that. So I don't want that one so exposed. I think that would be pretty good. And we can even put a turret. Let me get my sandbag. Uh, just throw these sandbags down to remind myself of this. I believe it's under... No? Is it miscell not miscellaneous? That's weird. Security. Ah, oh, that makes more sense. So I can put some sandbag, like... If a turret's going to go right there... Like this. And put another turret. And it looks like... Let's actually do it like this. And cancel these ones. So a turret right here. So this one's going to shoot at them. These ones are going to shoot at them. Yeah, that'll be pretty cool. And from there, we can just... We can spam sandbags around. We can do all kinds of stuff. I'm excited, though, because... Making these kill boxes is a great way to defend your base, and uh, I really love experimenting with different ways to do it. And again, I know there are probably maybe more just better ways to do it, but I'm not too worried about it, as I said. Going for broke, I decided to jump ahead and start our double wall by doing the outer edge first. Uh, we just, I decided to go with granite, because I do remember someone telling me granite is uh, probably the strongest stone. Hopefully that's not wrong. Either way, I had enough to do this outer edge. I could absolutely save up granite and do the second layer. Maybe I already have enough to do the second layer. This only cost about 170 or so granite, so that wasn't so bad. And uh, I might do that, but I could also use slate or something else in the second layer. Not a big deal either way, but I didn't expect to get this much done. <gasps> Ooh, geothermal research complete. So there we go. Now we have a project for the next episode. But guys, I'm going to stop it there. So... Thank you so much for watching. In that next episode, as I just said, we'll probably look at some geothermal power, and I will attempt to give everyone their own room in the colony, which it's totally unfair that I prioritize the prisoner first, but, you know, that's that's just the way it works. Uh, I, I've dug into the mountain for them. Not much. I mean, this was already dug here, but I've risked it for them, so maybe it's about time I uh, take the plunge and, and consider at least digging into this mountain and possibly dealing with those god-awful cave bugs. But we'll see. All right, guys. I'll see you next time. Peace out.